Hi friends, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying healthy and safe. My name is Nick and today we're here with the Predator Super Quiet Inverter Generator 9500 watts from Harbor Freight. It just launched a few days ago. I picked it up during my travels and brought it back home as I uh, was able to pick this up at a, at a Harbor Freight store. They just had a tag for it. They said they just got one in stock and I thought today's, today's the time. I need, to, I need to do this. I've been watching the generator market for a while so it wasn't really a spontaneous purchase and I had talked to my friend a little while back and then again uh, this past weekend about his experience with his uh, Predator 3500 and, and I'm starting to see these things more and more everywhere you go like whether it be NASCAR races or food trucks and stuff uh, a lot of people were wishing for more power on an inverter generator in comparison to traditional we can talk about that as well uh, and I did put their new generators that are launched on my website so there's a link there that'll help you out maybe help you decide if you're considering a generator like this this generator runs at 17 199 US dollars plus tax and then plus an extended warranty if you'd like to get that and that's in comparison like they say to a Honda EU 7000 now the EU 7000 runs at 7000 watts peak and 5500 watts I believe as, as a constant running power or recommended watt running wattage and this one here is 9500 watts peak and then 7600 so a little bit more power there uh, 220 120 which is nice, uh, that's gonna work good. We're gonna smack this thing with the welder, we're gonna run it with the house, we're gonna run it with the motor home. A lot of things happening in the world right now. And you know what, before I even go into more of the generator, I just wanna tell you guys thank you for, for sticking with me and hanging out. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers. That's like a blessing in my life and I, I appreciate that, that uh, you guys would hang in there whenever I'm, whenever I'm on the go and, and doing what work's got, a, got, got in store for me, you know what I mean? Um, it's been a little bit of a hectic time run around but there's plenty of opportunity out there I, I really wish the best that all of you guys have started channels this year if you're watching this I want you to have the best 2021 you could possibly have I know there's been a lot of things going on and, and that's got me thinking about some practical items that that I think that people should have so whether it be camera stuff or you know stuff in the garage if there's things I can help you with or questions that you have I'd like to be there to help you and I'll, I'll do the best I can so uh, I appreciate you big time for for this so anyway let's get this generator opened up We'll talk about some other use cases and some things we'll, we'll use it for. Um, I've had a lot of thought process going into this for a while. Ever since even Westinghouse, I believe Onan is now selling like that Westinghouse 4500 watt inverter generator. Uh, probably to provide better customer service because I know a lot of people were complaining about that. So I've watched the, the generator market for a while. And bang for buck, if this thing works out and, and runs as good and provides a, a reliable backup solution and a reliable power solution, with uh, pure sine wave power, I think in time will tell. Is it as tried and true as a Honda guy? I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm a Honda guy for the most part. So I have the Honda EU 2000. I have a Honda motor on my lawnmower, which I couldn't afford the actual true Honda lawnmower, so I bought the Lawn Boy with the Honda motor. And even my power washer is a Honda. So I try to stick with the, the tried and true for core things, uh, but at the price point, with this thing being less than half the price of an EU 7000, <laughs> and still parable, I, I think that if it if it does what it says it's going to do, um, it could be well. The one thing I would consider is 67 dB. I think it's dB with the A after it, but I have a meter. We'll take a look at the dBs on this thing, but let's get it opened up and, and, and just see what it has to offer, okay? I unloaded this out of my truck myself, and I was in a rush. Uh, this thing is 200. It says on the weight sticker... 293 weight for shipping, but I don't think it's 29. I think it's more in the 260 range. This thing is a beast. It is pretty heavy, but so is the Honda counterpart. So we'll see how they package this. This cardboard will be good for a nice campfire. If all works out well and this thing doesn't do well, this is actually pretty exciting. This thing is this thing is huge. Um, before, before you fill the gas, add fuel stabilizer, open access panel, and add engine oil. So maybe pull this outer shell off. The idea with this was to have a little bit of portability on my 5 by 8 trailer and with the welder and be able to take some things on the go if I need to do some welding on the go. So we're hoping this thing uh, does the job. All right, so this thing... <laughs> How do I explain this? Uh, this is a lot bigger. Uh, they do have a wood bottom on this.
All right, so first things first, I was reading the instruction manual while I, uh, just to see if I noticed anything that would be different than most generators. And the first thing I noticed was, it says that you have to run fuel stabilizer with your fuel or it voids your warranty. So that's something to consider if most of you run fuel stabilizer and if you do or if you don't. I'd be, I'd be curious if other generators say that. I don't think I've ever heard a generator say that you had to had to run that or avoid the warranty. All right, so the first thing I did here is pop off this cover. This is where the air filter, the battery, and the access panel is for that. So you pop off this access panel, which is insulated. So uh, two eight millimeter bolts for that. It would be nice if those were toolless and you could just unscrew them by hand, but you do need an eight millimeter socket for that. It does, uh, there's a zip tie on these two terminals. So you're gonna wanna cut that zip tie off and then uh, 10 millimeter on the one side and a Phillips on the other. So you can use a Phillips or two 10 millimeters if you want to. It would be nice if this uh, came with a little package, and I don't know if it does, of like dielectric grease for those terminals, but for the cost, you can't really complain. It doesn't look like it comes with that, but it does come with a funnel, which is nice to fill up the oil. So um, we're gonna get these connected. I'd recommend doing, uh, I guess, positive first and then negative when you're connecting a, a battery and the reverse when you're disconnecting it. I think is the common. I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But uh, so yeah, other than that, looks pretty cool. It's a BR6, I think, ES spark plug in there. And this is a 459cc uh, overhead valve. So I think the Honda 7000 is the, the GX390, which are, are like bulletproof. So let's get this connected up real fast and show you how to do that. All right, so we've gone ahead and made sure that that electrical connection's tight. Let's get this other one done. So the easiest thing to do for this is just slide that boot up, get it out of your way while you make your connections. And then I'll throw some dielectric grease on here probably after the fact. And then just make sure your wire routing's out of the way. But this battery is removable. There's a little bungee strap holding that in. Air box. Everything else pretty standard. Pop the cover back on here. So let's see what they give you in the box here. This is kind of nice. You get a uh, 30 amp, 125, 240. Uh, this is the L1430. You get a, what is this? The uh, 30 amp, 125. Yeah, 30 amp, 125, L530. 20 amp, 125. Standard plug. And a 20 amp 125 so you get you get two of those it's pretty cool you got your 12 volt adapter for your charging which is nice they do give you a small tool kit with the generator let's see what's in this probably spark plug wrench okay little scrunch type of uh, unit so this would probably be for your spark plug to reach the plug on this on this unit so not too bad so you get that and a Phillips screwdriver, so you can just pop that all in there. I think it will all fit in this nice little little pouch. So that's what you get inside the bag, and you also get a funnel as well. So that's uh, something else you get. Rotating this thing around here, we're gonna have to use our eight millimeter socket again. This time, so oil access doors actually Connect battery inside. So here's your recoil start. So you have that. I wonder if you don't have to pull this whole side panel off. Let's try that first. One thing I might want to say is you may want to, before you connect the battery so you're not tempted to start it, put your oil in first. The oil is on the other side here. Again, two eight millimeter. Add engine oil to fuel mark to start. Engine will not start or will shut off if sensor detects low or no, no oil. We got the generator leveled. Now they recommend 37 ounces of engine oil. So it's just a tad over a quart. 10W30. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in here. So what a lot of people recommended at first use because you're gonna change the oil pretty quickly on your first use. Some people even use a uh, magnetic dipstick. 
that you can get to make sure any metals are caught in the oil reservoir, but you can um, run like a conventional SAE 10W30. Just run that for your till your first oil change, may change your oil quicker. All right, so we're good to go on oil. Pop this cover back on, and then we can fire it up. All right, so if you take a look at your front panel here, you got your starter on and off. You have your eco throttle for say, on and off. You have five volt, one amp USB ports. They are traditional USB, 2.1 amp and a one amp USB-A ports. So the new standard is USB-C. It would have been nice to see a USB-C port on there. You got your engine hours. You got your uh, start and stop choke. Output indicator, overload alarm, low oil alarm. Speaking of alarms, up here is your carbon monoxide shutoff. If that's flashing, that, that'll turn off. You have a ground, you have your DC 12 volt output for your battery with a reset switch for that. It is nice that the reset switches and the breakers are actually covered. That's a good thing. Uh, this port here, I'm guessing this is your parallel operation port. So for your parallel operation, you can pair this with two different generators. Of the same size i guess so if you bought two of these which would still be half the cost of a honda you could run two of these and have double the output 14,000 uh, max watts there um, and then you have your 120 volt only or 120 and 240 switch right here so you got that switch uh, toggle your 30 amp switch uh, this is the 30 amp breaker on and off for your 30 amp breaker we flip these covers up it's nice they are covered you got your standard ac 120 30 amp you got an ac 120 20 amp these are gfci protected which is nice that'll be good for a job site and for safety sometimes they can cause issues but uh ac 120 20 amp another set of those right there ac 120 240 30 amp there's your 30 amp socket you can run your 240 volts so that's how we will uh, run the welder and some other things off of this. So that's pretty much the front panel. There's nothing else from here down. This is just slotted for, for breathing. You got your nice handle here on the, on the top that pull this out, turn it up, locks it, and you push it in and you're good to go. The handle is nice because this unit is heavy. I mixed some stabilizer in here, so we're good to go. All these stupid fuel cans, I'll tell you what. That's a joke too. We're just gonna throw a bit in here just to get it started. I usually don't put as much fuel when it's only what I need. I think it's a 6.8 gallon tank. So a little bit bigger than the Hondas. I'm actually optimistic on this. So we'll see how she does. Run it for the break-in period and follow up, make, make a couple videos with it. All we can do is put her to the test We'll run out of daylight today, I'm sure. Maybe I should throw a little more in, eh? Just a little extra. This way, if there is any problems, I don't have to siphon as much out, huh? So since we just put some oil in there, I am just gonna give it a couple, a couple little spins. Get some oil splashed around. And uh, that should be good. All right, so let's just give this a quick go before it gets dark out tonight. I do have my uh, DB meter, and we'll take a look at it, see how she runs. Again, this does have locking wheels, which is nice on caddy corner. On the wheels, I believe that these uh, casters will hold up pretty well, so that's nice. Um, I think this is just an overview right now of this generator, just getting it started, first look at it. But you're going to see this with the welder in the house and everything else that I want to uh, use it for and see how it works out. So. Appreciate it if you subscribe, follow along, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do there. But let's get this fired up, see what happens. So we have our pre-inspection check done with our air filter, the battery, the parallel cable, everything else. We got stabilized fuel in there. We're good to go. 120 switch. So off is on storage. We're going to hit that to run. Uh, and we can hit the start choke and then turn back to run. So we're on start and choke. Our uh, throttle control is down. 
Let's give her a shot, see what happens. All right, so 21 feet away from the generator in eco mode. Twenty-one feet away, non eco. Face the exhaust torque. On eco mode with the exhaust facing towards us. Eco mode, exhaust facing towards us. Well, friends, we're running out of daylight. I hope this was enough to get you a first look. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll do my best to help you. And uh, this should be a fun experiment. See how it works in uh, a couple different scenarios. Follow along. Thank you. Be safe, stay healthy. Love you. See you in the next person.